The world's equilibrium hath been upset through the vibrating influence of this most great, this new world order. Mankind's ordered life hath been revolutionized through the agency of this unique, this wondrous system, the like of which mortal eyes have never witnessed. Soon will the present day order be rolled up and a new one spread out in its stead. Baha'u'llah. So today we're so happy to have Dr. Beppe Robiati with us and his topic is, is a world order necessary? Dr. Robiati has spent his life combining his business activities with a parallel educational and spiritual role, which aims to bring the concepts of a new world order into business. Publications and lectures delivered in a number of countries around the world have allowed him to share his growing experience and expertise to an ever wider circle of business people, civil society, professors, academics, students, and Baha'i meetings. Applying his principles of ethics, the management of human resources as the mine of gems that they are, a business model that looks at the benefit of the stakeholders and the spiritual principles of Baha'u'llah has allowed his entrepreneurial career to prosper while setting a practical example of actions matching words. Working with a team of collaborators, he's built an extensive curricula spanning a wide range of business issues, his pillar remaining the entire concept and definition of ethical behavior, both as a vision in a new world order and as a practical instrument in the business and socio-political field. Originally from a Catholic background, he became a Baha'i at the age of 16. He served on the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Italy, the democratically elected governing body of the Baha'is of Italy, for 45 years, and is also a co-founder of European Baha'i Business Forum. And with that, I'll hand it off to Dr. Robiati. Good evening to everybody. I say good evening because I'm talking from the other side of the ocean, and we are near, near to, to dinner, and for you it's near to be lunch. So... Good afternoon and uh, for those who are living in America and good evening for those who are listening in Europe. Uh, just to tell you a few things about uh, the Baha'i faith for those who are not acquainted about this faith. Uh, the Baha'i faith was born in the middle of 1800 by an Iranian called Mirza Hossein Ali, known in the planet with the title of Baha'u'llah, the glory of God. He was accused during those days from the Muslim authorities and from the political authorities of Iran. In those days, Iran was called Persia to be an heretic because he was uh, against the, some of the uh, traditions of Islam. Four, four were uh, the heresy of which he was accused. The first heresy is that Baha'u'llah declares that God is only one. Even if we have called him in different names, we, we imagine him in different type and we prayed him with different prayers. But he's always the same unique God. And just not to be misunderstood, he makes an example of the sun. The sun is only one, but we call him with different names depending on the language we call him. But everyone in French, in English, uh, in Japan, in Japanese, in Arabic, when we say sun, everybody knows exactly to whom we refer. The second point of which he was accused is that all the religions are coming from the same God. They have come during the history and they have guiding the humanity to a better, uh, to, to the betterment of mankind. The third idea that uh, Baha'u'llah was accused of heresy are the, the fact that he declared that the people of the planet are like the flowers of a garden. A garden is not done only by flowers of white color, but the, the, the beauty of the garden depends on the variety of the flowers, the variety of the colors, the variety of the perfume. But all are taking the same, the water from the same gardener. The fourth and the fifth accusation were that in those days, Baha'u'llah declared that men and women were equal and equal opportunities for developing between men and women was absolutely necessary for a growing community. So all these four points, uh, we can um, put them together with, with one of the banner of Baha'u'llah, which is unity and diversity. The earth is but one country and mankind its citizen. So these were the accusation to Baha'u'llah and he was put into jail in 1852. And from 1852 to 1892, so for about 40 years, 
of his life, he was in prison due to the fact that the authorities of Iran, the authorities of the Ottoman Empire, and the clergy people of Islam were accusing him to be a founder of a new religion which was heretical on the aspects of Islam. <clears throat> so the title of today is a world unity, is a world order necessary, is really a big title. And we don't have an answer if you don't go to ask this question to the history and to learn from history, why do we need, if we need a world order. To go in this direction, I have to show you some slides I prepared in order to clarify in a better way the point, this point of view. Now, if we go to understand and to learn from history, we have to talk about evolution of humankind. Generally speaking, we have learned or we generally say that evolution of humankind was like a parable. We were in a certain position on the left of the slide and we went through the history to the top, to the, to the top of the evolution. In reality, this kind of evolution is, uh, is a soft evolution, but in reality, this is only a theoretical way to understand what evolution was, because in reality, evolution was, uh, evolution of human society up to now was, was done in a different way. So we were individual during the time we became family, individuals came together and they gathered together into families, families developed into tribes, Tribes came together and they formed villages. Villages, they were building walls around the villages. They became city. City passed through a period of time of about for 1000 years, city state. Try to imagine the Roman empire was a city state. From the city state, we jump into the time of empire. And in the last phase of this evolution of human society, we jump from the empire level to the national level. So this is about evolution, which was not soft because any time the situation was jumping from one level to another, there was a problem of vibration, turmoil and chaotic situation. This is what to say that to go from a village to the city state or from the city state, city state to nation or from empire to nation, there was a period of vibration and turmoil, which, which uh, is, is also, we can understand there were civil wars, uh, there were uh, at the times of uh, economic difficulties, uh, social crisis, uh, um, uh, let's say uh, growing problems. Uh, this is due to the fact that any time that the society was jumping from the lower level to the upper level, there were turmoil and crisis. Now, we reached the level of nation, the last one you see in, 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 into the slides, in the middle of 1700. And up to now, we are still at the level of nation. So it's about 200 years that the level of nation has been stabilized, passing three different stages. The first stage was from the empire to a nation where a nation was still depending from an empire. Later on, the nation became independent from the empire because the, the, the empire time collapses. And the last one, the final one is the time of the what we call a sovereign nation. Sovereign nation is the nation where the population is free to move inside the, their, their, their state and they can elect in a, in a democratic way their government. Up to now on the planet, we have about 220 national states, but only 800% had reached the level of sovereignty because some of them are still under autocratic regime or dict dictatorial regime like China, like Cuba, like North Korea and so on. If you reflect on the last 200 years, we understand that uh, there are problems of vibrations and turmoil. We had two world wars. We had several global financial crises that have affected the entire world economic system huge migrations of millions of poor in many parts of the world. This is not only from Mexico to United States, from Mediterranean to Europe, from the Pacific areas to Australia and so on. A lot of problems of extremes, uh, increase of extremes of wealth and poverty. You know, the, the statistical uh, numbers uh, 
is that in the last 20 years, the population of the planet has gone to a bigger poverty and the number of millionaires is really uh, taking 99% of the wealth of the entire planet. So that, that there were also some et ethnical uh, racial problems, uh, religious uh, conflicts and so on. This is means that we are in a period of transition due to the fact that we are at the level of nation and we are trying to find a solution for the future, future we don't know. So what are the main vibrations and turmoil we have today and the, each one of us can really understand very well. Environment is the first main vibration. Everywhere we have the problem of environment, every people, every, people, every uh, nation is protesting due to the fact that pollution of the entire planet is uh, reach a high level. So this is one of the main vibration touching all of us. The second one is employment. Many of you do not know maybe that 40% of the population of this planet has have not a job. And what do they do? They move from their countries to the richer countries. This is why we have millions of people from Africa, from South America, from Asia, coming to, the, to those they consider rich countries, which in reality it is not, because when they arrive in these rich countries, they are not able to find a job. And this is creating a vibration and turmoil and crisis and conflict. The third one is health. We are just coming out from, from the COVID. We do not know if you are at the end, if you are really exit out from the COVID. But this is, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a crisis in the entire planet and has caused vibrations, turmoil, economic crisis. And millions of people passed away due to the fact that we were not capable to find a solution to, uh, to the vaccination. Then we have the problem of women. If you don't know, women are 55% of the planet population. So the women are the majority of the inhabitants of this planet. But why they, they, produ they produce vibrations, uh, they create problems and turmoil? Due to the fact that, that there is a discrimination. Women are discriminated because they are not considered at the same level of men. And I'm not speaking only about the, the people of, of uh, uh, the Talibanis uh, or the uh, people in the Arab countries, but even in Europe, in America, there is discrimination in the business community about women, and they did not reach the same level of men. I do not know, I do not have time to enter into the subject, but problem of women is one of the most important problems in the world. And we have to consider the 55% of the women are not call today to give a contribution to the betterment of the society. And the last one is the world economy. The world economy is creating a big, a big, a big, a big turmoil all around the planet. You know why? Because in, after the Second World War in 1847, 1846, when the Second World War was over, uh, seven countries of this planet have been destroyed by the Second World War. This was Italy, Germany, Japan, and so on. And they called for a meeting in, in uh, one of the meetings, which was, was very important to create uh, the system to rebuild the society, economic and financial institutions of these uh, seven countries. So a conference in, um, in Bretton Woods was called and uh, financial system had been given. Three main institutions were born in those days, the, the World Bank, the, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Trade Organization were born in, in this ninth Bretton Woods conference. And to these three institutions, the countries who were destroyed by the Second World War have given the authority to rebuild financial and economic system of the seven countries destroyed by the war. These three main institutions have done a great job because uh, from that time, the seven countries became the most seven important countries in the world, we call them today the G7. But on, inside the planet, we don't have only seven countries, we have 220. So in the moment that the seven countries destroyed by the world became the G7, the rest of the countries were becoming, becoming poor. And this is creating today a great turmoil due to the fact that the economy of the planet is managed by only by seven countries. And these seven countries are not still 
the more important countries in the economy of the world because China is not part of the G7, India is not part of the G7, Brazil is not part of the G7, South Africa is not part of G7, South Korea are not part of, is not part of G7. So you see that this is creating a big turmoil. And this is why we can really say that we are in a period of, trans of, of transition from the nation to the future organization of the world, which is, will be world unity. And we call this period, this period in the, in the, you see in the yellow uh, color of the slide, a period of transition. This is, means that all these uh, um, uh, uh, vibrations and turmoil, and we see them on a daily basis, is part of this period of transition. Now, a new, tra a new uh, uh, turmoil came in the last uh, two, three months. This is the war in Ukraine. Maybe for the Americans, it's a very, quite far away because due to the, the fact that there is an ocean in the middle, but for the European countries, for the Asian countries, this is one of the biggest uh, turmoil entering to the picture. And uh, nobody knows how to find, to find the solution. So due to the fact that in the past, we were passing through individual family, tribe, village, city, nation, and each time we had a turmoil jumping from one level to another, chaotic situation, even today, we have this chaotic situation in the yellow transition time. This means that we are at the dawn of a new jump, bringing society from the level of nation to the level of world unity. Of course, will be a long time, a long of period where in this transition, many, many, many turmoils and many vibrations will enter to help society to understand that the only way to find the solution for the world peace is to enter the idea of world unity. But to enter the idea of world unity, we need an instrument. And the instrument is mainly uh, the idea that we need a new vision for the, for the betterment of society, jumping from the idea of the nation to the idea of the world unity. Baha'u'llah in the 1800 has given the, this idea Telling us, telling us uh, a, 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 a quotation from his writings. And the quotation is, uh, the earth is but one country and mankind its citizen. So the earth is but one country is quite clear today. You know, Gorbachev in the time of the perestroika in Russia, he was using this quotation telling us that the earth is, is, is but one country. The earth is like a house, it's like our home. We have only one home. And the family of the human being are the family of this home. Each one of you live in a house. In your house where you have kids, you have friends, you have parents, there are no limits going from one room to another room, going from the sitting room to the kitchen. There are, you don't need to, to present a passport. You don't need a visa. You don't need to change your language. You don't need to change your currency to move from one room to another room because it's normal that the house for the family is the house for the family and the members of the family are free to move inside the house without giving any excuse or any presenting any passport. So the first quotation of Baha'u'llah, the earth is but one country, is quite clear today. We need today to remember that the, the, um, the, the nations have to accept the idea that they are only geographical nations, not political nations in the future, where the population of the nation are free to move from one room, one country to another country. But this is quite easy to understand because we are living in a place where just economy is bringing the nations together. But the second part of the quotation, the earth is but one country and mankind its citizen. This is the most difficult part of the quotation of Baha'u'llah. What does it mean that mankind is citizen? Baha'u'llah is talking about citizenship. And today talking about citizenship is one of the most difficult items in every parliament, in every nation, in any political realm, because we are talking about a passport, about nationality. Now I want to make you an example. I'm an Italian and I have an Italian passport. Due to the fact that I have an Italian passport, the Italian government is granting to Beppe Robbiati few items which are fundamental for my life. Freedom, 
no knowledge, so I can I, I can assess at school without paying one penny. A job, if I don't have a job, I will have safe help from the government. Health organization to take care of my problems if I have health problems. And freedom in my ideas, in my religion, in my in my professional, in getting uh, everywhere, in getting married with anybody I like. So these are items granted <coughs> by the Italian government only because I have an Italian passport. So the passport is fundamental for me. But if I was born in Burundi or in the Congo, did I wear? Did I have the same guarantees being a, a Congolese citizen or not? No, I have a daughter working in those areas and the people in those areas do not have any guarantee due to the fact that the Congolese passport do not give any granted items as the same granted what I have in Italy. Only because I was not in the Congo, because I was born lucky guy in a family who was living in Italy. So when Baha'u'llah is telling us, the earthy but one country, main candidate citizen, is telling us about citizenship of the world. So we are citizen of the world. So this means that in any place I was born, the same item should be granted to me or to any children born in any countries of this planet. This is a big jump. This is a big challenging for the future of humanity, because this is transition time, means that we are working in order that all the children of the planet will, will have the same granted items as Beppe Biati from Italy, independently from where they, have, where they have born. So when we speak about world unity and we speak about the future of mankind, the quotation of Baha'u'llah, the earth is but one country and mankind, the citizen, is really the goal to which humanity has to be guided by the population of this planet. Now, it's a matter of knowledge. It's a matter of growing our, our knowledge in the idea of the vision that the transition time is a transition time. will last maybe 100, 200 years, but at the end, we will jump from the transition level of the nation to the level of world unity. But to manage a world unity, we need an instrument, which is a world order. Baha'u'llah is telling us that the world government is organized with a world super state. So we have 220 nations on the planet. We have 220 national government, but everybody of them will be under a super state organization. Baha'u'llah is saying that the new world order means that we have four main institutions in the future that will be guided by democratic elections in the, in, in the planet. The first one will be the world legislature. World legislature is an institution who will put laws for the whole humanity. Now, we have seen that we had five main problems. You remember environment, employment, health, women, world economy. We have 220 ways today due to the fact that 220 nations are talking about environment but each one of them is guiding itself without taking care of the others. Employment, we have 220 different national laws about employment. Law, health, we have 220 different ways to approach health. And we, we have seen with the COVID how many difficulties we said in vaccination programs because there was not any world organization taking care of giving the right law. About women is the same, about world economy is the same. So when I say that the world legislative body will legislate with the same law for all the countries, this is a fundamental new vision of the future. So the, the five main uh, uh, difficulties, environment, health, economy, will have to be worked under the same law coming from the world legislative. Then we have a world government. Who is going to put to, to, put, to put in action the, the, the laws of the world legislative institution, the world government, who will be elected in a democratic way by the whole population of the planet. And this world government will have two hands. One is international force and one is international tribunal. Now, for example, just to tell you an example, with the time of Ukraine, we don't have an international force. 
because there is no world government. So even the United Nations is not under a world government. And also we will need an international tribunal to take care of the fighting between the nations. So what is important to understand is that uh, the, the idea of a world order is fundamental in the moment that we will jump from a national level to a world unity level. Because the planet Earth is like uh, an airplane going around the, the universe. And uh, we need only one who is guiding the aircraft. And the only one is will be the world government. Of course, we are very far away from the vision of Baha'u'llah about the future because we are in a period of transition. We are here in the yellow, in the yellow uh, 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 step and it will take maybe 100, 200, 300 years because we have two main subjects. On the one side, we have to reformulate and reorganize the organization of the countries to reach the, 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 the goal of the, of the world government. And on the other side, you have to recreate the citizen of the planet, taking away all this citizenship we have from Germany, Italy, Japan, US, and consider ourselves citizen of one planet. When this together will grow slowly, slowly, we will reach the level of world unity. And we can jump and we can understand that the ultimate goal is that the earth is but one country and mankind is citizen. I'm, I'm stopping here just to, because I know that maybe you have a lot of questions and uh, the most important item is to answer the question in case uh, you did not understand some points. Of course, Baha'u'llah in his life of 40 years uh, of imprisonment, he has written thousands of pages, about 100 volumes about this problem of the future, about the relation between men, mankind, nations, uh, and the political realm should slowly, slowly uh, be acquainted of the vision of Baha'u'llah to reach the point of oneness of mankind and the earth is but one country and mankind is citizen. Thank you so much, Dr. Robiati. It was really interesting. Um, so yeah, we have time for questions. If anyone has questions, please put it in the chat. The question was, if Baha'is think that they have the solution to the, the world's problems, um, doesn't that mean that Baha'is view themselves as better than other people? Okay, you know, we have to be very, very um, wise. The unity of mankind will not be reached by Baha'is, will be reached by the cooperation of the people of this planet, by the cooperation of the religion of this planet, and by the cooperation of the government of this planet. What the Baha'is could help is to give the knowledge that the unity and oneness of mankind is the vision, is the right goal to be reached. And that there are no differences between the gender, between a, women, women and men, between people of different colors, people coming from different religions, because we have to enter the idea of new education. We have to educate the population to become citizen of the world. And this is what the Baha'is can help with the help of other people, because the Baha'is will not never reach the unity of mankind alone. We need the cooperation of everybody. Thank you. How does the Universal House of Justice fit in your super state slide, especially in relation to the world legislator? Yeah, this is one of the, this is a personal understanding that because the Baha'i, the, the Universal House of Justice in the Baha'i world is the head of the legislative body. Maybe in the future, the House of Justice will be the, the institution that will give the laws for the whole mankind. This is uh, one of one of the points uh, that Mr. Robiati is is uh, is, uh, is uh, aware that uh, uh, the laws of Baha'u'llah in in his uh, holy books uh, will become the laws of the planet, and the the, the better uh, body to in order to apply these laws is the Universal House of Justice. Thank you. How can we guarantee that a future world superstate will not become an Orwellian type world dictatorship? Okay, this is a very interesting question. And here we have to understand what is a human being. Because uh, the, uh, the danger is that if a human being is, uh, is only a human being uh, using uh, 
one of his quality, which is power, of course, we will never reach the end. The, 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 um, what Baha'u'llah is telling us that those who are elected in any institution are not there to manage power, but to manage service. So any Baha'i institution, including the world government, is a government of service. And service is coming from a spiritual quality. You know, when we think about the man, Baha'u'llah is giving a very interesting uh, uh, um, definition. Generally, when we define, let us say, a human resource, we generally say human resource is a worker, is a manager, is a CEO, or in the past was a slave, in the past was the owner of the company and so on. Baha'u'llah is giving a very interesting uh, uh, definition of who is a human resource. He says that the human resource is a mine of gems of inestimable value. So each one of you, each one of us, each one of the 8 billion people around the planet are mines of gems of inestimable value. But where are these gems? They're not in the head, they're in the heart. And these are the spiritual gems that potentially we have at the moment we're born. But the, the purpose of life is to develop our knowledge, studying <coughs> with our brain, with our qualities at the university, become professor, become medical doctors, but we also have qualities which are not depending by the intellectual way of thinking, but are part of the inner part of the soul. And these are the gems, and these gems are the value, the real value which we, we have to develop during our life. What are these values? For example, honesty is a value, love is a value, um, uh, humble, uh, to be humble is a value, generosity is a value, uh, transparency is a value. All these values are part of, of man. But we, if we develop only intellectual qualities, we will lose what potentially we have inside of us, which are the inner values and the gems of our of our mind. So when we talk about education of a child, we have to talk about education in the way that we study the university, but we have also to educate the soul of this child to take out the gems he has inside himself in order that these are together, the moral values and the intellectual values can go together. So in the moment that spirituality, you know, the word spirituality have a lot of meaning, but the best meaning have been given by definition of Abdul Baha. He says that his, his spirituality is uh, love into action. Love is not coming from the brain. Love is coming from our heart, from our inner qualities, our soul. So love into action means to do a service without being paid. So if we, if we educate our civilization in the future years to use the spirituality to have a better qualities of equilibrium in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the qualities of man, no one who will be elected in, into any institution will use this election as a power, but as a service. And even in the common society, I'm a CEO of a company, I tell you. I'm a CEO of a multinational company. It's a big company with thousands of employees. I don't have any power like in, inside. The people of my, my company, they know it. Mr. Robiati is serving the community in order that everybody could grow in their own affair, in their own vision, to give a better service to create a, a society with a new vision. And this is why we must not be afraid that in the future, a world government where we, we elect people with a new educated man where the education will not mean only intellectual education, but also education of values, we will have that service will be the guidance of that government. Thank you. How are the world conferences that Baha'is are having all over the world um, helping the unity of mankind? Uh, this is very interesting. You know, the Universal House of Justice, the head of the Baha'i faith in the world, have organized a thousand conferences all around the planet not to convince the people to enter into the, into the Baha'i faith, but just to tell the people we are in open, open community. We are an open group of people working for the betterment of mankind. Would you like to come with us? Keeping your main uh, original idea, but come put, them, put together our common points 
and work together for the better of mankind. Because I, as I tell you before, as I told you before, we don't start so proud that the Baha'is will be the guidance of this mankind. We will be part of this mankind, cooperating and working together with people of God willing, having the same vision that the next jumping of our society will go from nation to a world unity. Who do not lie? Who do, doesn't want to have today a world unity, a peace on mankind, taking together people of different colors, like the flowers of a garden, people of different religion coming together and to have a garden where the gardener, which is God, is giving the same water to everybody. But each one of us can develop privately in a different way, but with the same vision, with the same purpose, which is your one of mankind. Thank you. With all the social and broadcast media available today, why is um, the Baha'i world vision of peace um, not agreed on and promoted by more world leaders? What needs to be done to promote Baha'i concepts worldwide? Oh, this is the reason, you know, what is the purpose of a world leader? You should ask a statistical report from all the world leaders. The world leaders are looking for their own chair. What does it mean, oh, its own chair, the power? They are not interested in anything that are other than power. So the Baha'is are not interested in the power, are interested in giving service. And this is the difference between, and this is why service is not so very well, very well considered by the media due to the fact that media follow the power. And the power sometimes is bringing us in fighting world. Based on your comments regarding the role of the Universal House of Justice in the future, wouldn't religion become a major vibration slash turmoil? Oh, you know, Baha'u'llah has said that, well, uh, you know, the, 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 if, we, if, we, if we study history, and you know, uh, it's very interesting to understand that history is, uh, is uh, working in cycles. So for example, just for those who do not know, we are living or we just came out from a cycle called the cycle of Adam. Adam was considering in our culture, the first man, in reality is the first um, um, prophet of a cycle. And inside the cycle who was 6,000 years ago is Adam, is Moses, is Abraham, is Buddha, is Krishna, is Jesus Christ, is in the Bab. So it's a cycle of 6,000 years. With Baha'u'llah, we are opening a new cycle, which will, be, which will last a thousand years. Inside the thousand years, many thousand years, we will have more, many manifestations of God. Due to the fact that society is moving, society is like a child. When a child is born, at the beginning of his life, he cannot also walk. He needs someone who is helping him. The same is for society. We are now at the beginning of a new cycle, and we are children. We are still working taking care of a solution. The solution of our problem is, is passing through the world today because we are, we, are, we are children. You know, if you, if you have a child of three years old and you buy for him a toy, what is he going to do with the toy? He destroyed the toy to see what is inside. Exactly what the society is doing today. We are destroying all our relations to, to, to understand what is inside. But slowly, slowly, we will grow up and we will understand that destroying through the world is not a way to find the solution for the problem. So slowly, slowly, following in this case, uh, some of the laws of Baha'u'llah, which are the same of the laws of the pre previous religion, there, is, there are no differences between religion. Only the practical way is different due to the fact that society has totally changed since the time of Jesus Christ. We have new technology, we have new communication system, we have trans transportation instruments, which in those days they were not. We have economy, we have a lot of people and in those days, we didn't have 8, 8 billion people. So we need instrument, which is, is a new instrument. Baha'u'llah, on the way, on the same laws of the Ten Commandments of Jesus Christ and so on, is creating a system with a new technology, bringing us to a new level. So the problem is to understand that the only way to proceed is to education. One of the subjects the Baha'is they know very well of the Universal House of Justice is to give possibilities to the children of the planet to become aware 
of their uh, of, of their of their personalities of their education because in 20 years time these will be the people managing the planet and if we are able to educate them on the uh, intellectual way and on the values of their soul we will have new race of people managing the planet in a different way and bringing slowly slowly the, this planet out of the world we, to, we are working to, uh, we are talking together uh, in these days about the war in Ukraine, but you don't know how many wars we have on the planet. We have a war in the Congo, we have a war in the Chad, we have a war in Ethiopia, we have a war in, 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 uh, in Asia, we have the war in China, we have a war in Afghanistan, in South America. You know how many wars? So slowly, slowly, through a new education, through the fact that spiritual and intellectual will go together, we will have a new generation of people who will manage society in a different way. Thank you. Can you explain why in most cases, when the empire state or conqueror or peacekeeper has withdrawn from a country, the subsequent elected government or dictatorship has been corrupt, violent, and self-serving? How do we move forward from this and what steps are involved? A recent example is Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a very easy answer because you know, the fact that empires have, have, uh, have collapsed is due to the fact that, you know, each, each, each cycle has a time. So when we enter in the 17th century, in the 1700, you know, this was the time slowly, slowly of the, uh, of the collapsing of the empire and they enter into the picture of the nation. But this is only one phase because after the nation, we have to go into information at the beginning, you know, the transition time, the yellow, the yellow step you have seen into the slides will take maybe 300 years because from one nation, we will gather many nations like European uh, Union or uh, APEC or ASEAN or uh, Andean Pact. There are many, many parts of the planet where the nations are coming together. And slowly, slowly from this unification of the continent, we will have the union of mankind. The problem is the corruption is part uh, of the, of the turmoil, because we are managing the planet with old system of education and taking care also this, this bloody power, because the problem is always the power. The power should disappear. Generally the power depending on the ego, I, I have the power. I am the richest. I want to be his, I want to be there. So the problem is that we have to, so to change the I in we, when we will have the idea <coughs> that we have changed I in we, we will be in the, in the right way for development. And corruption will go slowly, slowly away because corruption is related with I and not with we. Okay, the next question is, are we not expecting too much by thinking that at the end of this war in Ukraine, we will have a world order based on world unity? Wouldn't it be more correct to expect that the new world order that will emerge after this war will be fairer and more balanced? Uh, you know, this is only a temporary phase uh, of a long period. Uh, I, I don't want to be pessimistic, but you have to take, in, to take in mind is that the last jump from the national level to the world unity will be a long jump, a long time. Uh, the, there were some more difficulties. Uh, we had a, a lot of suffering to, to enter the idea of a new world because we have to change our, um, the, our inner um, soul. Uh, and this will take time only uh, uh, through education. And uh, the old generation will never reach the point of the world unity, only new generation, because the new generation ha should have two main subjects. It's very difficult today. I am an old man. It's very difficult, even if I'm a Baha'i, to think of the three main subjects of what Baha'u'llah is saying. First, all the religions are the same. Very difficult today in the planet. Second, all the men and women of this planet are like the flowers of a garden. This is a huge, this is a big jump. It's not so easy for people that have been educated with the problem of apartheid, the problem of racism, still today is one of the most difficult challenges in our, in our life. Third one, that economy will not be the main instrument to, to put the nations together because economy 
is really today is managed only to um, on the financial activities to make richer people who are already rich. So we have to change our mentality in a new mentality, taking care that our um, one of the goal of uh, a human being today is to become humble and to use this humbleness to serve the others. And this is not easy for people to accept it. Thank you. Have the power seekers stolen the new world order phrase from the Baha'is? And what can we do to regain our momentum as proponents of the new world order of Baha'u'llah? You know, what I personally think is that we have to share our ideas of the new world order, of the, 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 the vision of Baha'u'llah, about oneness of mankind, about equal opportunity between men and women, equal opportunity for all men of different, different uh, colors, key skin colors. We have to share with our friends, in, in, with our people, in the company we are working, in the university we are studying, these ideas of Baha'u'llah, because they are free of charge. Baha'u'llah has given 40 years of his life in prison to give us this uh, beautiful um, uh, idea, beautiful principles, in order that this principle can become the principle of the people. So do not be afraid, do not be shy to uh, um, inform your friends. Do not try to convince the people to become Baha'i, because this is not the purpose. Convince the people that your idea is this, tell them your ideas, tell them about the life of Baha'u'llah, tell them about the vision of Baha'u'llah and leave them in thinking if these uh, values, these principles are valid for a better world. Thank you. So I think we'll end there. Thank you so much again to Dr. Robiati for such an interesting presentation. We really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody. Have a nice lunch and we will have a nice dinner. <laughs> Thank you. Our speaker next week will be Mr. Russell Ballew and his topic will be the prosperity imperative, getting wealth right. And these talks are again every Saturday at noon Eastern time. And I've put the link to our contact form in the chat. Thank you everyone. And we'll see you next week. Bye.